Welcome everyone to Mission Critical Performance with SQL Server 2014. I'm your host today, Dharmadi Komo. Um, I work in Redmond with SQL Server team. And today we have very, very good agenda for you. We have packed speakers for you. And for example, in the afternoon, um, we'll have like, all the online database operation stuff and buffer pool extension. But in the morning, um, especially, we'll be focusing more on the in-memory technologies. For example, the database developer, management, and design pattern. However, this session today, we're going to focus on the overview on in-memory OLTP, which will ship with SQL Server 2014. With me is Kevin. I'm very pleased to have Kevin here for the next 45 minutes, guys. Um, Kevin, tell us what you are and then what you'll be sharing with us today. OK. Um, I am a, uh, a principal lead program manager in the uh, SQL Engine team. I have been with SQL Engine for uh, about seven years and worked on projects like Always On that you might be familiar with. And I have been the uh, lead program manager in the uh, in-memory OLTP space uh, since about two years ago. And uh, before Microsoft, I was uh, in consulting for uh, eight years. And uh, uh, my academic background is uh, computational neural networks. So that's about me. Great. Thank you. So uh, first, can you let us know about uh, SQL Server 2014? Okay, so I want to step back a little bit before we uh, dive into the uh, in-memory technologies. And I want to talk about uh, what SQL 2014 is all up. Uh, just give you a background on this for a couple of minutes. So the first most important thing uh, for SQL 2014 is in-memory technologies. And here there are several items. In-memory OLTP is actually the flagship for uh, SQL 2014 uh, release. And uh, in memory, DW, which is data warehousing, is already there in 2012, but in a non cluster, non updatable form. In 2014, it's fully updatable and uh, it has further uh, performance gains and higher compression rate as well. And also, we have SSD buffer pool extension uh, in the in memory space. So the second pillar is uh, enhanced high availability. As you know, that high availability, which is always on, of course, in 2012 is the main uh, you know, feature for that release. And uh, we have received um, you know, some very high, highly visible and useful uh, DCRs, which is design change requests from customers, such as, can you make the, uh, you know, the readable secondary still be available uh, even if it's disconnected from the uh, primary. So that's one of the enhancements we made for 2014. And also we increased the number of uh, secondaries uh, from four to eight in this release as well. So another very important pillar for 2014 is to complete the story of hybrid scenarios. So this is, uh, uh, this is all about you have on-premise um, you know, uh, resources and uh, you may want to uh, eventually move your workload into the uh, cloud, let's say uh, Windows Azure uh, VM. But there are multiple steps you can achieve that. And for example, you can start with moving your backup into the cloud, and then you can move your secondary into the cloud, and eventually move your whole workload into the cloud. Uh, wherever you are, uh, we will be able to support you in that journey. And uh, lastly, we have uh, some additional investments, such as uh, supporting reliable file system for Windows and uh, some additional, take advantage of some uh, additional uh, Windows uh, features. Um, so that's a, a quick all up view for 2014. And uh, the rest of the talk is actually going to come back to the in memory space and really double click on the in memory OLTP and, and get into that in depth. Great. Um, so it seems like there's so many in memory technologies. Can you tell us the differences? Yeah, so let's uh, maybe break this into uh, two parts. Uh, one is, uh, you know, inside the SQL 2014 itself, we have many in-memory technologies here. And uh, what's the difference between them? So um, you have the in-memory OTP. Really, it's intended for highly concurrent data entry, data processing, um, data retrieval type of load, workload. And usually, the data uh, you're processing is at a more granular level. Uh, versus in memory DW, which is data warehouse, uh, you usually run a decision support type of workloads. 
and uh, they operate on much larger scans and uh, aggregates, uh, etc. Usually on colder and historical data compared to the uh, MRI or OTP. And SSD buffer pool extension is uh, it's a uh, uh, a new capability added on top of the existing uh, transactional workload. And this is uh, to allow you to speed up the performance without having to pay more money to buy more RAM. Uh, so it's a very cost efficient way to make the performance faster, um, but you don't have to modify the app in any, in any way at all. There are so many buzzes today, Kevin, about in-memory technologies in database world today. Um, when you think about the in-memory OLTP, in-memory uh, data warehouse, the SSD buffer extension, why Microsoft implement in-memory technology? Can you show us why? Right. So this is uh, where I think you know we can also talk about the, the what's what's in the market and what the competitors a little bit. So um, there are really two reasons we implement in-memory OLTP. One is uh, there is actually a very strong market need for higher throughput lower latency at lower cost, right? So there are actually two uh, uh, elements I'm driving at here. You know, usually people think about high throughput is the, uh, the most important metrics to, to drive towards, but also a lower latency is also very important. So the other uh, element here is uh, hardware trends has really changed over the uh, last 10, 15 years. The design principles for relational database, which was uh, really, the foundation was laid about 15 years ago, uh, is no longer valid uh, in current architecture. So the database design has to change. So in-memory OTP is one of the most major engine changes or underlying architectural changes uh, uh, since about 15 years ago. So what in-memory OTP is, it's high performance, right? It's all about performance. It's, about a, it's not about a specific feature. It's memory optimized OTP engine. And it's built into SQL Server and architected for modern hardware trends. I just want to highlight the integrated into SQL Server part really quick. So if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the competitor space, right? Times 10, uh, you know, solid DB, et cetera. Uh, all those in-memory technology, they're all a separate engine, uh, not built into or integrated with their main uh, database product. Um, for in memory OLTP for SQL Server to be tightly integrated into SQL Server, it's actually a very hard uh, work to do, but we did it because we believe that's the, the best value for the customers. Um, so this is great, but I have two questions that I want to ask you. First of all, is this a, a competitor response from Microsoft? That's one. Second of all, I remember in the past that I can pin my table using DBCC into my buffer pool with SQL Server anyway. So what's the difference between that? Right. So the, uh, is this a, just a uh, response uh, from co uh, competitors? Uh, the answer is no. Um, <clears throat> so actually, we started the uh, project uh, uh, triggered by the hardware trends or hardware trend changes uh, about five years ago as a, uh, as a uh, prototype project. And uh, the, uh, the prototype project went really well, and uh, the project moved into the product group about two years ago. That's when I was involved. So you can see this is not really a, a, a very quick response to the marketplace. It's something we actually have been working on for uh, actually five plus years now. Okay. And um, um, as far as the pin table, pin table is a feature we introduced in 2000, uh, SQL 2000, which got deprecated in 2005. Uh, so this is about force the table to stay in the buffer pool without being paged out. Um, and this is, uh, I, can, I can just cut to the chase. Um, E-memory OTP is not pin table. If we were a uh, pin table, it wouldn't take us five years to build it. Right? It's, it's, uh, actually, the next slide will get into more in depth about what E-memory OTP is. You can see how far away from pin table it is. OK, let's go to the next slide. Oh, actually, before we go there, I just want to uh, talk about the hardware trends really quick. Okay. So here on the lower right-hand side, you can see the, uh, the memory price. Of course, you, you know, we're talking about in-memory database. Of course, the memory price has been coming down steadily. And I uh, just want, want to remind people, depending on the dim size you're choosing, one gig of memory now has come down to the price range of $10 to $20 uh, 
uh, per gigabyte. So uh, when you think about, you know, you may not be able to afford the size for uh, your memory database uh, for memory uh, cost. Uh, think again, right? It's, the price really is not uh, that high at all. So the other things, uh, the other trends I want to point out, they are a little bit not very, uh, very, um, um, I guess, uh, self-evident from the uh, slide. One is the uh, Moore's law is still holding, even though the CPU clock rate has stalled since about you know, 2004-ish, right? So as you know, the CPU clock rate has stalled uh, around 3 gigahertz. It has not gone up for a long time. But the number of cores on a commodity CPU has been going up ever since. So those factors dictated how we think about in-memory OTP. It's more than just the in-memory portion of it, but there are other elements we have to consider. Okay. okay. So this is a, a pretty busy slide, so let me spend a little bit of time on this. Um, so Damardi asked me the question, right? Is this a DBCC pin table? That's really the first pillar of, uh, of this uh, uh, slide. But I want to uh, step back a little bit, introduce you to the layout of the slide, and you can understand uh, the design principles behind Hackathon a little bit better. I mean, when I say Hackathon, it's a code name for you, memory OTP, so we use them interchangeably. Um, so on the bottom, are the drivers and why we do certain things. Why did we design the product in such a way? And uh, we have hardware trends as a driver, right? We talk about memory, we talk about clock, uh, CPU clock rate, we talk about many core processors. And then we have business low TCO as a driver as well. And then in the middle is how we implement it, you know, architecturally. And, uh, you know, we have the high level, you know, uh, I will explain what it is, but we, I won't delve into too much of the details here. At the top, it's what the customer get out of it, right? What's the customer benefits? So on the left, let's, let's focus on the first pillar really quickly. So uh, in-memory OLTP is main memory optimized. And uh, we want to take advantage that memory is fully abandoned. And um, so what your customer get is high performance data operations. So if you simply pin the table in the buffer pool, and when we talk about performance gain, uh, you know, in uh, in-memory OTP, we actually compare to that case, right? So when we say we get 10x or even 20x of performance gain on top of uh, traditional SQL or SQL on disk, um, you know, uh, tables, we're actually comparing with SQL tables fully resident warmed up in the buffer pool, right? So. Essentially, the, the, the DPCC pin table option is already there uh, functionally. So the additional performance gain is really coming from somewhere else. So the best way to think about uh, uh, the, the first pillar, uh, how do we optimize for main memory, is that um, think about in-memory OTP as a speed of a cache, in-memory cache, but with the capability of a database, right? That's the best way to think about it. So if you think about today, in SQL Server, we have 8K pages. Why do we design the data container to be 8K pages? It's not really for the fast data access or data operation. It's really for data transfer to or from the block device, which is a disk, right? So if you optimize for in-memory data, you no longer need those kind of pages. And then you build whatever data structure is most efficient for in-memory operation. And that's really what this pillar is all about. Right? Okay. So let me briefly talk about the other pillars quickly. I won't spend too much time on it. So when we uh, you know, saw that the CPU clock rate has stalled uh, since 2003 or 4, well, this is not really something we can take advantage of. But it really forced us to think differently, to say, well, if the CPU is not getting faster, how can you use the CPU more efficiently? So this is where we come back to the uh, query processing. Instead of using interpreted query uh, processing, we natively compile the query into a DLL and load it and run at native speed. So, so in a way, the, um, the, the query is really running at the raw speed of the machine. And we do aggressive optimization at the compile time. Um, you know, keep in mind, for all TPU workloads, you compile once, and you might execute a million times, right? So the, the cost and, and the trade-off is, uh, is really minimal. 
And the, uh, uh, what you get from here is whatever business logic you build into store procedures is super fast, right? Uh, I want to give you a quick uh, a pointer on this. If you build a business logic with uh, logical switches, like you know, loops, et cetera, when you natively compile it versus uh, interpret it, a query, uh, is what SQL today does, uh, the natively compiled version is about 100 times faster. So the third pillar is all about concurrency. So this is driven by many core processors. When you have many, many cores and many, many threads, the locking mechanism we have today is impeding the performance of, a, uh, of the system scaling up. And as a result, uh, uh, in memory OTP, use multi-version con optimistic concurrency control. We run each thread as fast as we can. And uh, so there is no contention between the threads. That's how you can achieve high performance across uh, many threads. The last pillar I want to emphasize, this is not something uh, we should take for granted, right? We built the, uh, the in-memory OTP engine um, you know, into the SQL Server in a very integrated way. All the tools and capabilities of SQL Server um, are naturally available in the, uh, in the in-memory OTP space. For example, um, always on, which we shipped in 2012, is fully supported by uh, in-memory OTP as well. You have the same manageability and administration experience. And uh, with queries, you can actually join a, a um, you know, table from in-memory OTP and on these tables uh, together. So all of those interoperability is there because we, we, we took the time to build this hybrid engine approach. Hey, Kevin. This is all so exciting the way you explain it. Um, but my question is from the business side. Is this something that we have to purchase extra out of SQL Server? Is it something like you add on to SQL Server? Or is it something that's built in and is part of the SQL Server licensing? Uh, it's built into SQL Server uh, both from the technical side and also the business side. And there is no additional license uh, needed. It does require enterprise addition mm -hmm. to uh, leverage uh, in-memory OTP. Actually, when you install uh, SQL Server yep. enterprise addition, you don't even see an option of enabling uh, in-memory OTP. It's installed as is. Right? Oh. It's already built in. And then at the runtime, you enable in-memory OTP. Wow, this is awesome. Can you show us an example how this thing works? Sure. Let's, uh, let's uh, switch gear really quick. Mm -hmm. oh. OK. So this is an a, uh, example of doing a quick comparison of a you know, store procedure, uh, which does the uh, record insertion into the table. Um, the traditional version versus the memory optimized version, so we can see uh, what's the difference in um, you know, roughly the syntax and also, also the performance, of course. So don't worry too much about the syntax. Uh, I think we have a next session. You also will come in and, and actually talk about the syntax in more depth. Okay. So here, just, just focus on the intent uh, and then look at uh, you know, the, uh, the performance. Right? Sure. So good. here, let me uh, switch. Uh, uh, to master and drop the database. Actually, I don't have the database there. Then I just create a uh, regular database. And then all we need to do is add a, a memory optimized um, container for checkpoint files. So don't worry about this too much. I will have an architecture slide to explain why we need that. So this is essentially for in-memory OTP checkpoint files. Let's do that. So once you do that, uh, you are able to create in-memory OTP tables from that point on. So let's first try the traditional, uh, in the disk-based uh, table, and uh, let's, uh, let's uh, see what the performance is to insert 100,000 rows. Uh, so here, the, this is a table. Let me create it. And uh, four columns, and, and pretty simple table here. I create a one non-clustered index. And uh, I will also create a store procedure, which simply loops and inserts record into this table. And when I run this store procedure, I will run a thousand, well, hundred thousand loops, right? Hundred thousand times. 
uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and let's measure how long that takes. So you can see in the corner here, you have a timer. So this is uh, inserting 100,000 volts. And we're already 15 seconds. Hopefully, it won't take much longer. 17 seconds. So for 100,000 volts, 17 seconds, not bad, really, right? Mm -hmm. yep. But let's see what uh, Hecaton can do. Uh, I mean, Hecaton, you know, in memory OTP. Um, sorry for the uh, code name and the official name terminology switch here. So let's come to uh, in-memory OTP, and I will create the table uh, as a memory optimized table. As you can see, there are indeed several keywords that's different. For example, the, the index uh, is defined in line, and it's a little bit different, right? You can see this is the hash index, and we define a uh, hash bucket size here. And also the table is defined with memory optimized on as the keyword. Uh, this tells the engine that uh, uh, this is uh, fully memory optimized. I didn't specify the durability of the table. If you don't specify it, by default, it's fully durable. So in other words, even though this is a memory table, if we pull the plug uh, and the system recovers after that, uh, everything you committed should be fully there. Right? Okay. So this is a very important to know. So now, um, let's create the, uh, something we call natively compiled store procedure. You can notice that the compilation of the store procedure took a little bit longer than what we had before. Mm -hmm. That's because we were aggressively optimizing for the uh, compilation. And you can also see that some of the keywords are different. The most important one is the store procedure is defined with native compilation as a keyword. So this tells the engine that we need to compile this into a DL. It's a very different than the traditional interpreted T-SQL. Right? So now, let's run this. Uh, See how long it takes. It's done, actually. It's less than one second. I actually, technically, if I measure, it's about 200 microseconds. Wow. That's, this, how, that's how fast it is. This is good. Um, and, and we can check really quick. You know, uh, we have 100,000 rows in the, in the table. Right. So when I look at this, it's only a few changes on the code itself. Can I just move my existing application right away? Uh, yes and no. So we have a tool called AMR, called Analysis Migration and Reporting Tool. So you can use the tool to analyze um, you know, which objects or tables or store procedures are good candidates for, for migrating to uh, in-memory OTP. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, if everything is fully compatible, the cost of migration is low. Right? Like in this case, you can see that the business logic inside the store procedure or the table column types, everything uh, is not changed. But if something is not fully supported, indeed, there is some cost for migration. Got it. Okay. So let's, uh, we can do a little bit deeper dive uh, into the OLTP architecture. You remember OLTP architecture? Sure. Okay. So let me take a little bit of time to talk through this. The, this hopefully ties everything together, what you have seen uh, in the demo. And uh, what you see right now is the SQL Server as is. Right? You see all those different layers, TDS layers, the, uh, the QO, uh, query processing layer, buffer pool, uh, transaction log, and data files. So this is everything you are familiar with. We have four, ex four tables here and, and associated indexes. Those are the checkered um, you know, patterns. Those are indexes. So that's in the example. So this is a SQL today. So the question is, how does in-memory OTP fit into this picture? Okay. Right? So first, in-memory OTP uses um, SQL Server to allocate memory. So it lives inside the SQL Server EXE. There is no additional executables you will see. And the memory space we allocate is from SQL Server's memory manager. But it's outside buffer pool, so it's not the same within the buffer pool. Also, if you remember in the uh, demo, I did have a creation of a memory optimized table file group, right? So this is what you need to create before you can use in memory OTP. The reason is the checkpointing has to go somewhere and uh, in memory OTP's checkpointing pattern is very different than the 
MDF, NDF file for traditional SQL, right? We don't actually use a random I.O. It's all sequential I.O. That's why we have a different way of checkpointing, and we require a different file group for that as well. Underneath, it's using file stream file group, so it's actually not anything new, technically. So let's say we want to move T1 and T2 into in-memory OTP. What happens? So in this case, uh, through the syntax that, like I showed you before, mm -hmm. uh, we can actually redefine the table T1 and T2 in memory. And uh, as you notice, they disappear from the buffer pool space. In other words, they don't really duplicate in the in memory OTP space and the, uh, and the traditional on disk space, right? Okay. It can only live in one side. And you also notice that the indexes only live in memory they don't uh, get into the checkpoint files. And also, they're not logged. So in other words, indexes only live in memory. They're not hardened anywhere. So they are constructed on recovery and maintained um, online during operations. <clears throat> so as you can see that the, uh, the uh, in-memory OTP tables, all the operations on them are still fully logged, right? So that's how we maintain full durability on in-memory OTP uh, side. So for example, if the database reside in memory crash, I will still have my committed transaction on this. Exactly. Okay. Right. So if the database crash, whatever committed records mm -hmm. will sit into the uh, uh, log, log file, and hopefully there will be also checkpoint file to make the recovery much faster. OK, awesome. Okay. So how do you access those tables, right? T1 and T2 in this case. Uh, you can actually access them as if they're regular SQL tables. So this is what we call a query interop mode. And this is a fully integrated with SQL Server in such a way you can actually use SSMS, like what I just did in the end of my first demo. I just simply selected from that in-memory OTP table as if it's a regular table. I can also do other operations such as insert, delete, you know, update, just as if it's a regular table. So this is called a query interop mode. Essentially, the way to think about this is we provide the in-memory OTP from the access method layer up, down. And uh, from that layer up, which is the query optimizer, query processing side, is still the traditional SQL stack. right? So there is a very elegant way we can integrate those elements together and give you that flexibility of only migrating the table and use it as if it's a regular table. You do already have a lot of huge benefits for faster data access and also uh, lack of contention because mm. of that. Got it. Uh, but there is a better way. That's not really the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fastest way to use in-memory OTP. Uh, if you remember, we talked about uh, natively compiled store procedure. This is what we call a fast path. So if you look at the upper left, so this is a natively compiled store procedure. And uh, we do have our own compiler. Uh, the, this is where the business logic and also the operations like join operations, etc., got all compiled into native DLL. And then we run at a native speed. So this uh, na natively compiled store procedure uh, for the current version in 2014 can only access in-memory OTP tables. But this is the fast path for both business logic and also for data access. So you're talking about fast, and you show us in a simple example that how fast it is. What would a typical uh, business application would be able to see in terms of the performance, the profiles, when we move things to in-memory OTP, Kevin? Great question. Mm -hmm. um, so I will actually talk about this quickly before I switch to that question. So we have uh, uh, additional um, you know, features in in, uh, in memory OTP we call non-durable tables. You can define the table as non-durable, then there is no logging at all. So in that case, you avoid all the I/O overhead, and uh, so that's a very interesting feature. So coming back to Damardi's good question, where is the speed up? Right? You know, yeah. what kind of business op uh, application is suitable for in memory OTP? Um, not everything is suitable. So if you look at this diagram, this is more a, a a simplified version of what I just showed you. We essentially made the core engine of data processing and data management and data processing really, really fast. 
And uh, this is where we got maybe 30 times uh, you know, faster. For example, we can do a uh, single uh, item operation, insert, delete, update, uh, under 50 microseconds, right? That's really, really fast. However, you can see that, you know, we still have to do I.O., right? You know, if you want to have full durability, we have to go to the I.O. device somehow. A I.O. operation to a disk usually takes five milliseconds, right? So you, under, you can see the difference between 50 microseconds and five milliseconds. Even if you write a log to uh, SSD, sometimes it takes about one millisecond, right? Okay. So you can see that if you today have a very um, I.O. intensive or log intensive uh, log contention bottleneck, uh, moving to in-memory OTP, imagine when you have um, you know, many more times the throughput, the log I.O. is actually getting more stressed, right? So you may not be able to see high performance. So I.O. is still a very important bottleneck, uh, even in the in-memory OTP space. But as I mentioned, you can actually have some mitigation of using non-durable tables, and some other option we'll cover in later sessions, such as lazy commit option to mitigate those kind of issues. Okay. The other element is the uh, TDS stack, that is how chatty your application is, right? If the application is very chatty, it only queries or updates very small elements of, uh, of data uh, and do a lot of round trips. Um, the TDS stack, that is the communication stack itself, can take, for example, 200 to 300 microseconds per round trip, right? Compared to the engine space, which is 50 microseconds, you can see that you know, the overhead of the communication stack, which we haven't optimized for in-memory OTP yet, can become dominant. So the essence here is, if you're not log I.O. bottlenecked, and you're able to push a lot of business logic into the core engine, then it's actually a very ideal application for uh, in-memory OTP in 2014. Got it. So I understand some of the performance implications here already. It doesn't seem like um, every application will work, but some applications that fits into this category. Could you take a little bit deeper on what kind of scenarios in-memory OTP and as a matter of fact, in-memory data warehouse, which sort of scenario will work better uh, for the users? Right. So in-memory OTP is still using a row store. Um, it's fundamentally designed for operational data and uh, operational data that's current, that's hot, and it's uh, usually for the current period uh, of business processing, right? And uh, column store is the technology behind in-memory DW, data warehousing. And uh, fundamentally, it's a different way of storing the data mm -hmm. to facilitate a historical reports over a longer period of cold data, large scans, large aggregates. So if you think about how um, your data ages through its life cycle, it's really important to think about the current hot data is for row store in memory OTP, and uh, then as data ages, it becomes good candidate for uh, in-memory uh, data warehousing. So I'm not going to read through all the, uh, all the uh, details here. Uh, you can read them offline. But we have some very uh, uh, simple ways for you to think about uh, those two core technologies. Both are integrated into SQL 2014. OK, great. Um, is there uh, something that you can show us that will integrate this thing for business users? Yes, yes. Let's uh, switch to the uh, last demo. And I believe that's the uh, last uh, slide as well. And we have a integrated demo we showed at past summit uh, this year. Okay, I let's see that. I think it's a very good uh, uh, way to show what you get from the business perspective, what you get from an user perspective to use in memory technology. Okay. And uh, let me just step back a little bit, introduce you to the app, the simulation app here. So this is an e-commerce application, e-commerce site. And the people come here and, and search for titles and, and, and purchase titles. Uh, of, in this case, it's games. And um, uh, it's supposed to be a very high contention. And so we have an internal simulator here. And uh, the simulation, the driver, will will simulate a million users clicking and using the site at a regular pace, right? So I will get the, uh, get the driver running. So you can see um, the ordering, the purchase ordering transaction per second. 
It's about a thousand transaction per second. Not bad, right? right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the recommendation latency is about five seconds. Let me show you what that meant for the user. Okay, so so if I'm a user, I come to the site and uh, I select a title. You can see on the bottom, you have this uh, ticker, right? The ticker won't be there, of course, for the end user to see. But uh, given this is for uh, a simulation, we want to monitor how long it took for the recommendation to come back. So recommendation is actually looking at about uh, several hundred metrics of the user history and other factors to decide for this specific page what's the best uh, additional titles to show, right? And that recommendation running in a store procedure actually takes about six seconds. I will show you what that store procedure was. And also, if the user wants to purchase the title, you can see that the purchasing experience, which ends, by the way, one transaction to this uh, meter we're measuring in the end, is not that great. It takes about four seconds to actually purchase the title. Mm. So you can see from the end user perspective, it's not that great, right? The recommendation take quite a while to show up. The purchasing is slow. And in the back end, you can see that, well, those numbers are not satisfactory. Those are averages, essentially, uh, for recommendation and also the aggregate uh, purchasing um, uh, throughput. Another thing I showed you earlier on is, uh, let's look at what's hot list. You can see the last update time is 16 hours. Um, so what we do is we, we generate this uh, what's hot list based on the purchasing history and other factors. So it's a quite expensive report to run, uh, analysis query to run. And um, if you look at the bottom here, the third dial, uh, we have a hot list update latency. So this is how long it takes us to generate this first page, right? And it takes about 25, 24, 25 minutes. Because it takes so long to generate, we really can't afford to keep this page real time. Right? Okay. So in this case, last time we updated it was about almost half a day ago, and hence you see this pretty old uh, history. Right? And uh, whatever additional title people bought since that time is really not reflected here. Got so it. this is the where in-memory data warehousing comes in. So let's uh, come back to the, um, uh, the, the purchasing side of the user experience. Why can't, you know, let's speed up the purchasing experience through in-memory uh, OLTP tables. Um, so what just happened is that, let me show you the code. Uh, you, sh you actually are already a little bit familiar with this. Uh, the key is for the table to have the keyword of memory optimized on. Okay. Right? So this essentially is the key to get you, in this case, 20 plus um, you know, times of throughput gain. And here, uh, let me actually uh, do the uh, uh, recommendation, which is done in a store procedure. And we can natively compile the store procedure as well. Okay. And um, we're all, that's that go in. Let me show you the syntax here. So this is a store procedure, and the key is to have the native compilation keyword. And I can show you the store procedure how long it is. So those are all the um, uh, dimensions we calculate on, right? Wow. That's why it took so long to calculate. But once we natively compile this, the latency comes down to below one second, right? So this is eight times the speed of the recommendation compared to before. So now let's see what the user experience is. Select the title. You can see right away the, uh, the, the recommendation is generated, it's under one second. Wow. It's almost instant. <clears throat> and if the user is, uh, is purchasing the title, the title is purchased within a fraction of a second. Right? So you can see the website becomes so much more um, responsive. In the meantime, with a throughput of 25,000 transactions per second. That's wow. the real time uh, speed the user gets. Right? And on the in-memory, um, data warehouse in column store, if we use the, um, the column store index in this case, um, so now we're regenerating the report using the column store index. Let's see how long it takes. So this is for the report, uh, the hot list report that you generate. You want to regenerate more often? Correct. So now to generate the hot list report, mm -hmm. it takes less than half a minute. Right? Wow. 
And uh, if we can do the hot list regeneration so quickly, then we from can come back. From 16 hours, from 16 hours, right? Uh, before we generate, you know, over, yes, every 16 hours, mm -hmm. but the reach report uh, takes about a half an hour to run, right? Got it. But now we can run under a minute. Mm -hmm. Now, literally, we can make this page real time, right? So that's the power, if you think about this, the benefit of in-memory database is really giving the end user a very responsive, high-performance experience. In the meantime, give the business a real-time analytics wow. and be able to tie that whole thing together. Right? That's the power of in-memory database. This is awesome. All right, everyone. Um, so, Kevin, thank you so much for today, uh, for this session. You've shown us what's the SQL Server 2014 investment. You've shown us the introduction of SQL uh, in-memory OLTP as well. And you walk us through the architecture and show us some cool demos as well and how does it impact business users. So we'll end this session here. We'll take a 15 minutes break and we'll be back with the next session with yours. Thank you, guys. Thank you.